For all things outdoors, listen to the father of two, the Jesus-loving TV show hosting Harry, True Blood American Redneck, Ben Cole. And listen to the outdoor filming, chef cooking, chocolate milk drinking, John Weismuller. And we are Rooted Podcast. What's going on, my brother John? Look, we have had some fun over the past few days. Let's dive in, talk about some of our trapping, what we've gotten, and talk about the closing of duck season. But we also have an announcement to make about an upcoming trade show. So why don't we start off with that? Why don't we start off with talking about where we're going to be, what trade show it is, and where our booth is, and how people can come and see us. What do you think on that, John? Fill us in on those details. Sounds like a great thing. So listen, guys, Rooted Podcast slash Rooted Television is going to be at the National Wild Turkey Federation Convention and Sports Show in Nashville, Tennessee, February 15th, 16th, and 17th. We are booth number 1956. So we would love it if y'all were who are going to be there. Come by and see us. If you're not going to be there, listen, that's okay. You could still buy all of our stuff online. Check us out on all of our socials anywhere you listen to a podcast. So, but listen, it's going to be a really fun time. We may, hey, listen now, we may be doing a giveaway at mm. the show so you may want to come by so listen guys come to the show booth 1956 nashville tennessee nwtf show it's going to be a great time this is rooted podcast first show okay officially so that's a big deal for us and we're just really excited man uh i i, I really love that show uh there's a whole story of how i got into the outdoor industry and it all has to do with the nwtf show so it's a really big deal to me that we're there and I, I'm really excited to be there with Ben and uh, just, you know, grow rooted, introduce people to rooted. And uh, I'm just really excited, man. Man, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the show was a, a way you got introduced into the outdoor industry. And then through that, Mr. Sean Templeton, brother, he introduced us together. And now we have grown the rooted mm -hmm. brand from more than a television show. It's now a podcast too. And, uh, honored yeah, to do it awesome. do it with you brother mm -hmm. absolutely so it's gonna be a great time and uh you know I'm, I'm just ready for it i'm just ready yeah come on out and see us you never know we may just have a giveaway can't ever tell but let's get started for today john um what have you been yeah. trapping lately have you been <laughs> setting out any of those traps to catch those turkey nest predators <clears throat> I have, um, I do have some raccoons in my neck of the woods there. So I put out a couple dog proofs, uh, about, uh, probably two or three days ago. I think I need to move them. Uh, I think the raccoons have shifted on me, which is fine. So I know where they are. So tomorrow I will, I will go and make those adjustments, but, um, yeah, man. So I've, I've just got a couple, uh, <clears throat> A couple dog proofs out there, some uh, cat food in it, and waiting, waiting for the best. So, I did do something new though, uh, trapping wise. That's not for turkeys per se, but I've had just a uh, like two or three wild hogs on the property. Uh, first I've ever had, and you know I've talked about it before, but uh, now my dad and I we went out and built a homemade hog trap so the premise of it is it's just a basically a big circle and the end of it kind of overlaps on the inside there uh at with the beginning of it so the end comes inside the beginning and and you leave that part of the fence like not posted in into the ground so it's, it kind of acts like a flap and the pigs come in, open the flap, and when they get on the other side, it closes, and then they can't get out. So we've got that set up. I'm really, really hoping that that works. Uh, I don't have a ton of hogs to catch, but it it would be really cool, really, really cool if that works out. Oh, yeah, man. I love, love trapping, but I really love killing pigs. I don't know why other than they're just – 
an absolute nuisance to everything. And, you know, they really don't have any natural predators uh, in our area except for the Mm-mm. black bear and stuff like that. But, you know, they populate so fast that it's really impossible yeah. to catch up with their spread. So the sooner you get on that, the better, because the eastern part of the state in Tennessee has already gotten quite a large population of hogs. And mm-hmm. quite frankly, that's not good for for anything, especially farming. Um, if you're trying to grow some deer, it's not good. They'll root up your food plots. They'll they'll pretty much destroy just about anything and everything just to eat. And and they're nasty little critters, man. They are nasty. I mean, just gross. And they stink. Them big old boar hogs, man. They yeah, got a rank. Oh yeah, they do. Rank odor to them. And you know, you had that experience with me down in South Georgia. You remember when we smoked all that big rascal? And then we went to load that oh, thing yeah. up and. Dude, our hands smell awful dude. for a month. I was like, dude, we should have oh, just... It was, uh, it was a real bad idea. Shoo. Yeah, that thing need to wear Yeah, it was ripe. Um, but, man, I love trapping, too. And we've caught a lot of hogs over the years in those traps that, you know, you can close the door with a cell phone or you can watch the cell camera and see, okay, we've got X amount of pigs in this trap. Let's drop the door right now. And we've done that a bunch. It's very successful, very very good way to to catch a large number of pigs at one time because you just wait until they all get in there and then shut the door on them. Well, guess what? There's nothing they can do Mm -hmm. but meet a 22 mag, and that's about it. You know, I mean, the little ones are really good to eat. Like 20 pounds up to about 150-pound sow, man, you don't talk about some fine eating. You dig you a hole in the ground and let some coals get down in there, and you bury that rascal for a day. Talk about hmm. pick it off the bone. You just put the whole pig on the table and you just sit there and eat what you want. I mean, just right off that hog. <laughs> now you want to get it dehaired and all that stuff before you do that. I don't suggest eating hog hair. Probably not very good for you. Uh, probably don't taste good neither. But Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, not at all, man. <laughs> I, I would definitely recommend getting it dehaired and, you know, preparing it right before you, before you cook it and before you feed it to all your buddies. Um, but man, as far as the, the nest predators go, I have yet to start trapping raccoons this year. It's been a little bit different year for me. We've been duck hunting pretty hard up until last week mm-hmm. or whenever the end of it was, the end of January. Um, I for, even forget what day it is. What is it? We're in February. Yeah, we're in February. So the last day of duck season, man, it was awesome. Had a great time in Arkansas, killed a bunch of ducks and <clears throat> for the last two days there but we've had a really good season you know we have killed yeah quite a few green heads this year which was pretty awesome um you know usually my seasons are not filled with straps full of green heads but this year it was it was pretty solid you know i'm not a uh purist by any means i will kill whatever duck that's legal to kill that comes on the decoy spread and does it right um but on that subject you know, we, we still have to do our due diligence and catch these little nest predators because, um, I mean, they, they rob duck nests. You know, and the majority of our waterfowl, they winter up north, right, in Canada and the Dakotas and uh, stuff like that. But, um, you know, mm-hmm. one thing you got to look at, though, is you may have a local population of birds that do nest there, that do nest on your farm. You know, like wood ducks, for example, that's the most populous bird in the state of tennessee as far as waterfowl goes and they uh they i mean they they definitely have predation so what i've been doing is i've been focusing on those song dogs those coyotes um me and my son went mm. out together how's that going we, dude me and old tedro we went out and we set two traps on the same on our home farm here and they ain't even that far apart and we have caught two coyotes back to back day or within three days of each other so two coyotes three days apart but here's the here's the deal here's the way i do my coyote sets so on this particular one i didn't even know that there was that many coyotes traveling through there i just found a worn path in the woods and i thought hmm you know could be a pretty solid sign and i've had a couple on trail cam because i'll see if there's any deer here and all that stuff you know and a couple bobcats so what I did is I, I save all the carcasses, like duck carcasses and stuff. Um, 
you know, I'll save a, a, a couple back in the freezer after I've cleaned them and all that stuff and they're ready to go. And dude, that makes the most epic bait in a trap set you could ever imagine. Phenomenal. Uh, but more so, because, wow. you know, I, you can't keep that many because of, you know, the laws saying you can only have X amount on your possession at a time. So you can only, you know, keep what, like one limit or something. I, I Well, it's probably more than that, but I, I like to keep just one one limit on me at, I mean, in my freezer. So that way I can, you know, be within the laws and there's certain regulations and stuff to do with that. So just make sure you look into your local regulations on, on that side of things. Uh, but there's also some dirt hole sets too, that you can do, you know, you can use a little bit of everything. I mean, uh, if you're around beavers, beaver caster works really well. They have this stuff called a uh, yoke dope. Dude, that stuff works real good. I caught my first coyote and a fox off that last year during during season. Mm. And, uh, man, it worked great. But this year, man, uh, like I said, I didn't realize that <clears throat> these dogs were running through there like that. So I just went to the, to the left of the trail there, and I made a triangle right out of some sticks. And there was already some already there making a natural triangle. So what I'm doing with that is I'm making it to where they can't come in the backside and steal the bait without going through the trap. So you want to make it to where they have to step in the trap to get to the bait. That is the goal is to, to get them in a trap ultimately. So another little tip I do is I'll put a one stick right in front of the trap because they always step over the stick because they don't want to make that snapping sound of the stick because they think that, hey, this could be a live bird or whatever. You know, there could be something in this dirt hole set. Um, you know. So the stick really helps encourage that extra little step to get in that trap. And buddy, has it worked like a dream. I've never caught coyotes this wow. fast. Um, it's been phenomenal. And, you know, just to take my son, go out into the woods, set up a trap and we do it together, you know, and then he gets to see yeah, the, awesome. uh, how it all works, man. And he, he even helped me skin that, that Yodi today. It was beautiful, man. He had wow. you know, black black straps down his legs and just a real heavy, dense coat. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful critter, man. And uh, but he didn't like me too much. No, no, no. Attitude. <laughs> Which I guess I'd have one too. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, buddy. Uh those those coyotes get really, really mad when they're in that trap, boy. They you gotta watch out now. Yeah, they'll they'll get you. Hey, man, them raccoons are probably meaner than the coyotes are in the trap. A dang boar raccoon, man, that dude will bow up at you. I'm like, come on, man. Let's think about this. Yeah, come on now. I mean, I've got my little <laughs> 22 revolver here ready to rip. And I promise you, it's a lot meaner than you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I promise. Oh, promise. Dude, it was unreal. So there's one spot on the farm that I cannot catch a raccoon there. I don't know what keeps getting in that trap, but it's a dog proof trap like you're talking about. And man, mm -hmm. I have had, and I check them every day. So it's not like I leave it for days at a time, days on end, none of that. Check them just about every single day at some point throughout the day. And this one particular trap is right by a little spring where it comes out from the mountains and it just holds water there. It just pools up a little bit. It's not a pond. It's, it's too little. I mean, I could step across it. It just pools right there a little bit. So I thought, man, you know, that'd be a real fine spot for a raccoon to hang out. And every time I've checked it, my trap is like disappeared in the bushes. I mean, obviously I have it anchored to a tree, but it's stretched out, nothing in there set off. And I'm thinking, what happened? You know, what got in that trap that was big enough? Because, you know, dog proof is little, man. I mean, you can't even, you can yeah. barely get a, a finger or a couple fingers in there. So it's not like a deer or a turkey or anything like that got in it. I know better than that because they can't get in there. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder, you know, what in the world, either that raccoon is a beast and, I mean, just a giant <laughs> critter. Or I, I don't know what's going on with that one, man. But there's definitely something going on with it because it, it gets janked every time, man. It gets stolen every single time. And uh, 
just just mind boggling. So uh, why don't you fill us in on uh, yeah. the kind of bait that you're using for your dog proof traps? Yeah, well, I got a question first. Do you uh, have a camera on that thing? If not, maybe it sounds like you need to put one on there and see see what the heck's stealing you think. You know, that's not a bad idea. I haven't even thought about putting a camera on that rig. Uh, that may help solve the mystery. The only thing is I can't use those awesome wise eyes. Well, I guess I could. I just can't use the cell service because it's uh, there's no service in that part of the farm. I mean, it's dead, dead. And they have, man, I'm telling you right now, that dual antenna camera that they've got is it's phenomenal. It gets, it's dude, it gets service where my cell phone don't even get service. And it don't even work yeah. down there because it's just so back in the boonies. There's just nothing, nothing happening back there, man, but time and critters running around. So uh, hopefully we mm. can try it again. You know, my approach to trapping these raccoons is a little bit of that Frisky's cat food. And I may put a little bit of fish yeah. oil on the outside of the trap. Um, I know some people will use like marshmallows and stuff like that. And I'm sure it all works. And I'm sure there's several companies that make uh raccoon bait that you can actually put in the trap but i mean yeah. friskies works good for me man uh that works real good actually so I'll, I'll take that i mean so what are you doing <laughs> on your traps uh you know what are you doing to figure out where the best place to put those traps i mean what what are you doing with that you, you know man i don't really overthink it and i'm really not like this trapping expert person i'm new into it so on all my cameras I got out, you know, for during deer season, I've been just getting all these pictures of raccoons. So I'm like, uh, well, the the raccoons are here. I'll just put the trap here. And, you know, like <clears throat> I kind of try to hide it in some grass or something. And then like, you know, I kind of try to make it not just point blank obvious. Like there's like this trap in the middle of this dirt. And then, uh, you know, I got this, uh, butterscotch kind of like paste almost it's I, I don't know what it is really other than butterscotch flavor but when i bought my traps from this dude at the turkey show actually last year um he was selling this little bait and he said it was the one that works the most so i don't know he seemed like a pretty trustworthy fellow so i just bought it from him and uh so i put that up all all up in that trap and then put some some of the, some of that little cat food in there and uh now now we wait so awesome man hopefully hopefully it does work out you know you said something just then that made me think i, I missed out a part on the coyote trapping about hiding the trap so one thing that i always make sure of and and i have listened to a good buddy of mine his name's zach and mr big boy some great folks man uh they've taught me a lot about trapping zach is awesome at it dude that dude caught some bobcats really? last year. Yes, coyotes, all kind of stuff. Really? That dude was catching stuff right and left. Um, but what they taught me is you want to make sure that leg hold trap is seated properly and it doesn't have any like flex or, or moves or anything. Because if it moves the slightest when that dog steps on it, they're out, gone. You're not going to catch them that way. So you want to make sure that the 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 hole you dig for your trap is just enough to be able to pack it in good. And, you know, you can take some of the extra dirt and pack it in around the bottom of the trap and around the, the mm -hmm. I don't know the technical term for them, but I believe it's the ears that you fold open to open the trap. Um, but what you want to do is pack sure. dirt underneath that and then press it down and kind of shake it back and forth a little bit until it gets seated. And then what I do is I'll take some more of that same pile of dirt and I'll pack it on top of those little tabs. And then I just punch it underneath the trap, kind of pack it in underneath around the jaws. And, and then I just take the jaw that's not the one that is loaded. It's the other one, the loose one. And I just give it a little bit of shake just to see if it's, you know, what it's like. And if it's seated well and pretty concrete and solid, I'll take a little mesh screen and it's not a I, man. I use the metal mesh sometimes, but I really, really like the synthetic mesh because it's flimsy and you know, but it does what I need it to do. It covers the pan of that trap and doesn't allow all the dirt to go up under it. 
uh, which is another point, man. I use peat moss actually because it doesn't freeze. So I learned that last year. Mm. Vic told me that because um, me and Zach were having some problems with our traps freezing up because we were just using, you know, the dirt that was right there, sifting it over and and making it what it was. But peat moss does not freeze. So I was like, huh, well, there we go. So I did that, and my son he- actually poured out 90% of the bag of peat moss uh, while we were doing it. He's like, look, Daddy, I made a dirt pile. I was like, yes, thanks, dude. But just have at it. Play your hearts <laughs> out, man. Just have fun. I can get more peat moss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, then, so, 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 you know, once I get my little square of mesh on there, I, I take the peat moss or dirt or whatever you have readily available. And, you know, it's not the same in every place because we have a lot of rocks. We have a lot of um, hard soil to deal with. So the peat moss works really good for us for that too. Uh, you know, you don't have to sift 30,000 rocks to get enough dirt to cover your trap. Uh, you know, it's just nothing's in it except for the goodness. So um, I take that and I sift it over the trap, sift it over the trap until it's just a smooth, looks like nothing's there. I don't want any indentions. I don't want any, you know, little crevices that make it look like, you know, something's there. And another thing to be mindful of too is your scent. So a coyote obviously can smell extremely well. That's what they're good at. That's what they do is they can smell unbelievably. So what I would suggest to you, what I do is I wear gloves, the same pair of gloves every single time that I go to set a trap because it already has all the scents of the bait. And, you know, when I pick up the coyote, it's got the scent of the coyote on there. So it's not like human scent touching the trap a bunch. I mean, yeah, you're going to leave some scent behind. You just are. But there's ways to get around that so you're not constantly hammering down, you know, your human scent, like touching the traps with your bare hands. You know, that kind of stuff can be avoided by just wearing a simple pair of gloves that are super cheap at the local store. So I use the gloves and then I'll use like a little, um, sometimes uh, I'll use a, uh, like a little foam pad that I put my knees on while I'm trying to do that. And I use the same one every single time. I mean, it stays outside. It smells like the outside. It's just a barrier to keep your scent away from the ground. That's pretty much all it is. It's just just use something. You know, you could use an old cloth or something that's been outside or whatever. Just something to give that little bit of a barrier between your scent and the ground so that way you don't have a ton of scent right there at your set. It's what you're going for, essentially. And, you know, And I'm talking like I've done this my whole life. Last year was the first year that I seriously started trapping. It's my first year. I caught one coyote, one fox, and 43 raccoons and a bunch of possums. So my coyote game was pretty weak last year. But this year, man, I have learned a lot. I mean, a whole lot. You know, I was was just a real novice. And I'm still a novice, man. I'm still don't have it all figured out you know i'm still learning a lot and i always appreciate other people's insight we always love good advice on on that you know man uh i i would love to i would love to learn it i mean i'm i'm i mean i know nothing about it um but i i would i would love to buy one and just try to put it out as i have coyotes there i mean Dude, I can't tell you how many times I've sat there turkey hunting at this particular track of land and look over and there's a freaking coyote coming to eat me because it thinks I'm a turkey. You know, I'm sitting there <laughs> calling or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, I I know they're there and I get pictures of them every once in a while. So, I, I would like to try it just, to, just for the simple fact of doing it because I'm an American and I can do what I want. Yeah, that's right. So one thing you need to do when you go buy a trap is you need to let them soak in something that will strip the packing grease off of them. Let them soak and then let them sit in the rain for a few days and let them get a little rusty. And then what you want to do is boil them. You want to boil them bad boys. And then you can either do one of two things. You can dye them and then wax them. Or there's this new product out that you can just dip them in there one time and you're golden. Like. I don't know what all hmm. it does. I don't even know the name of it. I picked it up at the Trapper show uh, a few months back. I went there just fooling around and uh, found that stuff. And I thought, hmm, it's a pretty good deal right there. I only have to dip my traps once. I like it. You know, and it, it gets in all those little nooks and crannies of your springs and 
all the working parts and just keeps yeah. it from rusting out, which I had a little bit of an issue with that last year. The wax did great. The dye did great, but um, I didn't let a couple of them sit long enough and get rusty enough to really for that, you know, the wax and the dye to adhere to mm -hmm. it better. So now I have some pretty rusty traps. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, pressure wash them and ball them and then redo the whole process this year. Uh, but I've got some I need to do also that are new that I never used last year. So I've still got to strip all the grease off those bad boys and, and dive right in and get to going on this because I got some bobcats to catch. We got a mess of them at the ranch. I mean, dude, a mess of them. Really? You know where me and you sat in that shooting house? Uh, on the bean field. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you go oh, straight yeah. to the top yeah. of that mountain where we're looking, you know, when when you're in that shooting house, mm -hmm. you're looking straight out. If you go straight to the top of that mountain, I have a cell cam up there, an old wise eye. And, buddy, there is a bobcat through there at least twice a week, if not more. And coyotes, wow. too. So I'm thinking maybe, just maybe, I can catch something. You know, I mean... I would love it. You know, I mean, the statistics show that one female coyote mm -hmm. kills about 19 fawns a year. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know the whole stuff behind it, really? but that's what I've read. Yeah. That's what I've read. They can kill up to 19 fawns a year. So I mean, I've, I've read it. I, I haven't believe it. Physically, it's just mm -hmm. what I've. Yeah, dude. And you know, man, it doesn't matter if you have a big ranch or just a tiny track or even on public, like if the public, allows you to trap i mean it it's just so beneficial to your turkey numbers man i i mean i've i've, I've seen so many cases you know like i i know this one gentleman he had <clears throat> kind of a decline in numbers uh just on his own personal farm this was way before covid and all the numbers talk started happening in the turkey world but Mm -hmm. he kind of was seeing this problem and and then he uh dude, he trapped 30 raccoons in one like season trapping season mm -hmm. and uh then his then the two seasons later i mean his turkey numbers just skyrocketed and i mean it was just crazy so i mean trapping is just so so important especially for turkey hunting so if if you if you haven't trapped if you if you're thinking about getting into it just just start with a, a dog proof or two start small and then work your way up and all this other stuff that's that's kind of what i'm doing and it seems to be working just fine for me and if you're like me that just dives into everything head first and it's like oh man i gotta have 500 traps not really i don't have 500 that. traps i'm just saying <laughs> figuratively speaking my personality is you know it's like hey if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it a hundred miles an hour and all in. So let's rip it, you know, and <laughs> if I get you're that. like me, oh, yeah. watch a bunch of YouTube videos cheaper than I can buy them. Um, you know, I love small business. I love supporting small businesses, but at the same time, I also like my pocketbook. So, and my wife doesn't get so upset with me Heard when that. I'm making myself. <laughs> yeah 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 you probably make her mad just just so she'll kick you out of the house so you so you you can go make them yeah yeah no doubt and you know there's a little trick you can do on your uh dog proof traps so you know the way you anchor yeah. them to a tree you know you can tie them off or whatever but what i've done is i made um cinches so it's a wire cable you know obviously they can't chew through that so I take that, I crimp it on one end, totally, you know, loop it through the chain, crimp it. And then on the other side, I make a loop, but only one side of that loop is crimped. So I can still see. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I just use this, uh, I don't know if it's called an earth anchor. I don't know what it really yeah. is, but it's basically just a screw that goes into the earth. So like, I just screwed it all the way down. And then, uh, I mean, it's in like, you know, two feet probably. And then, yeah. uh, the uh, chain that's coming off the dog proof, I put, uh, put that on there, you know, crimped that thing on, stuck it in the ground, put a few rocks on it, called yeah. it good. Well, I'll tell you what, next time you come, or when I see you at this NWTF show, we'll just make them real quick. I'm, I'm in. Makes it a lot quicker hey. and easier. 
than the earth anchors yeah yeah uh, sound, yeah i'm all the way in dude because i yeah. you know man i mean i'm sure a lot of people listening are like are just like me i have no idea i've never done it and it's mm-hmm. like you know let's just let's just dive into it learn learn together and eventually in life we'll halfway know what we're doing to make a video on it for y'all <laughs> so <laughs> so we can teach y'all yeah yeah exactly you know it's just every day getting out there and trying and that's the biggest thing you know somebody's like well i don't know anything about this um i'm just not gonna do it because i don't know so what don't 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 be that person just go do it man you're gonna mess up you're not gonna catch yeah. stuff trust me my traps and i was like oh deflated but in reality oh, yeah. it's okay it's a beautiful thing man it's just getting out in the woods yeah and it's cool it's a fun time yeah. Oh yeah, man, my brother, my brother, that dude's a goober, man. That dude's mm-hmm. a freaking goober. Yep. But anyway, he uh, sent me this, you know, I told him I was trapping raccoons or whatever. And mm-hmm. uh, he sent me a picture of a four taxidermied raccoons and a wallered out <laughs> log with paddles streaming. And he said that that's the mount I need to get. And, and, and he said he wanted a hat. That, that's what made me think of it. You know Freaking what we're gonna giver. do for him? Build yes. the hat. So. I love it. And you know what? That that'll do to wear that hat. Here, me yeah. nor you. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He just got one of them regular size heads, unlike us. Yeah. I don't think so, man. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just real excited to get to get into something because you know, man. Whenever you're always into hunting and fishing, and you're kind of looking for something else to do. Whenever those things aren't really in season or time mm-hmm. of year whatever uh and here here's trapping another another thing to be outside and to learn and uh so i'm I'm just really pumped up for that and uh i'm ready to help out my turkeys so you know for people that think i just i'm just mad at turkeys i promise i'm not i, I love them it, it, until it's time to shoot them and then i'm mad at them for a month and a half but I was about to other say, than I'm, that i'm always trying to help them i love oh, man, they are so freaking nuggets, good Turkey nuggets are awesome. Mm. They are delicious. Well, folks, yeah. with that. Yep. Booth 1956, NWTF Convention and Sports Show, Nashville, Tennessee, at the Gaylord Opryland Convention Center, February 15th, 16th, and 17th. That's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So come, come check us out. You can do what I'm doing, right? Come on that Wednesday, which is Valentine's Day. Take your wife, your lady, your whoever out to dinner that that night, and then the next day, check out the sports show. So, I hope to see you there. See you for all things rooted podcast and rooted television, and I mean hats, shirts, hoodies, and other merch. Check out our friends at Ch Lone Star Pro and the link that is in our description.